Hey everybody, welcome to PC Respective. I'm Ryan Shrout, here today with probably one of the most anticipated reviews and launches that I can remember in 17 years of doing this. And that actually says quite a lot. We're here to talk about the AMD Ryzen processor, uh, the, the consumer desktop, uh, Summit Ridge reveal that we've kind of been teased for almost like four years now since the Zen architecture was first talked about and first started going into detail on. But now you can actually buy it. Actually, you could buy it a week ago or so. Uh, but now you should actually be receiving these if you pre-ordered it and you can actually go out into stores and pick them up today. Um, I'm going to be honest here. I'm recording this probably four or five days before the NDA. Uh, so there's going to be some things that we're leaving out of this due to time. We haven't had time to actually test it yet. Uh, that includes overclocking, really detailed temperature and thermal uh, analysis, uh, and going into a lot of those types of things. What we're going to talk about today is kind of what you get for your dollar, performance-wise. And we're only looking at, oops, as I move it across, the Ryzen 7 1800X. We're only looking at one of the three processors uh, today in this video. If you go to the full review over at PCPro.com, which we will have linked uh, in the description below, you will find uh, a full host of benchmarks. You'll find uh, probably some of the additional processors in there, the 1700X and the 1700. So make sure you go to PCPro.com and check that out. Consider this more of a, a summary portion, if you will, of that full story. Real quick, let's go over a couple of the details here. I'm sure many of you watching this already know it, but uh, there are those three processors. The Ryzen is the brand, Ryzen 7 is the first iteration of in the highest end, 1800X, 1700X, and 1700. They will have prices of $499, $399, and $329, respectively. Only the third of that which, the 1700, actually ships with a heatsink in the box. The rest of them will require you to buy aftermarket coolers. All three of those processors are 8 cores, 16 threads. Uh, all three of those processors have 20 megs of total cache, L1, L2, L3, all that goodness. They're all built on 14 nanometer process, te process technology from Global Foundries. Um, and so they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways. Obviously, they differ in their clock speeds. The top end 1800X has a base clock of 3.6, max boost of 4.0 gigahertz. 1700X drops to 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz. And then the 1700, 3.0 to 3.7, so a much wider range. It's also the only processor of the three that is a 65 watt TDP, so it's a little bit lower TDP. And my guess is a little bit higher for AMD to actually get uh, to that TDP level uh, with these parts. The 1800X and 1700X are 95 watt TDP parts, and we'll talk a little bit about why that's an interesting metric to look at. Uh, we're not going to go into the Zen architecture itself here. We've already gone through that many times if you listen to our podcast and other videos here. The, the, the major points are, you know, this is a ground-up redesign, uh, modern process technology that integrate SMT, simultaneous multi-threading, uh, which is what Intel hyper-threading has been for quite some time, uh, Turbo boost like technologies, dual-channel DDR4 memory controllers. It's a modern processor in all, you know, in all senses, right? Uh, so it's, it's a big leap forward for AMD in almost every possible way uh, over their previous desktop parts. Now, they're all new chipsets and, of course, all new motherboards that go along with that. You've got the X370, B350, and A320. They differ in a lot of interesting ways. Um, the ones that our audience, I think, will be most interested in are the X370 and the B350. Um, there's differences in the SATA configuration. There are differences in GPU configuration. The uh, X370 will allow you to run multiple GPUs, SLI and Crossfire, whereas uh, the B350 is only a single GPU. Both of those allow and permit for overclocking. Um, and then, like I said, different USB configurations, static configurations. We'll go more into that in a, in a future video and future article. For our testing, we're using the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. This is the one that was sent to us by AMD along with the processor to do our, our review and our benchmarking. So let's talk about performance. This is what everybody's here to really know. And again, with the pre-release, the pre-orders, we, we have a general idea of where these stand, but it, we obviously wanted to put it through our own test into our own metrics. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of the key uh, interesting ones here in single and multi-threaded. Uh, but again, there are a lot more benchmarks in the story at PCPro.com. So if you're looking for a specific test or a specific workload, it, you, may find it, you may find it there. So let's talk about single-threaded performance. This is the biggest question. Um, even though we're at 8 core 16 threads, which exceeds what uh, Kaby Lake, Skylake has been on the uh, Intel side of things, those max out at 4 core. 8 core is more in line with the Broadwell E 
platform, kind of the HADT line from Intel. And that's where you'll find these AMD processors lie, somewhere in between those two in terms of performance and in terms of cost, which I think will make them very attractive to a whole lot of people and a whole lot of our viewers. Um, Single-threaded performance. Cinebench is one of those classic benchmarks we look at. It has a single-threaded mode, a multi-threaded mode. If we look at uh, the X1800X all, starting, all settings stock, you're looking at an 18, the 7700K is 18% faster than the new Ryzen 7 1800X. The 6900K, which is a Broadwell E-based part, also eight cores, is 5.6% faster. If you look at Geekbench, the 7700K is 21% faster, and uh, the, uh, the 6900K is actually 4.1% slower, interestingly enough. So in the, keep in mind, this all takes into account clock speeds as well. So clock speeds are variable across everything. If you want a real world example of why that might matter, you know, single threaded performance is kind of overlooked in a lot of cases. It's still very important for responsiveness uh, and the feel of the computer. But one benchmark uh, and, and kind of processing workload that a lot of people use might be on the audio side. Maybe you don't do MP3 encodes anymore, but you encode videos. Well, that's going to do the same type of MP3 creation, AAC creation, audio compression. Uh, that is a very single threaded workload. In our testing, the 7700K is actually 32% faster than the Ryzen R7 1800X in uh, our Audacity workload. And the 6900K is 11.5% faster. So in single-threaded workloads, the, the new AMD processor struggles a little bit. But where it does shine and where it does stand out is in multi-threaded stuff. Uh, because if you compare this to the 7700K, it has twice as many cores and twice as many threads. It's going to dominate in those areas. And if you compare it to something like the 6900K, which is 8-core, 16-thread, uh, even the 6950X, which is a $1,700 processor, mind you, is 10-cores, 20-threads, this is going to be you know, as good or better than those at a you know, half the price of the 6900K. That's really where the value comes in. So Cinebench, again, if we look at it, this part is 40% faster than the 7700K. It's 8% faster than the 6900K. And it's only 7.5% slower than the 10-core 6950X at, uh, let's see, one-third of the price. So again, that's where the big impact comes into play. Geekbench scores, this is 13% faster than the 7700K. Handbrake, a utility and application I think a lot of you guys use on a regular basis. You'll find that this is 33% faster than the 7700K, 5% faster than the 6900K, and only 1.9% slower than the 6950X. That's a, a hell of a result um, for multi-threaded workloads if you were actually utilizing all threads and all cores on the device. Uh, general synthetic performance, you know, in Sysmark, it's going to be slower than 70, 70, 7700K. Again, a lot of single-threaded kind of Microsoft Word, Excel, productivity-based applications in there. In terms of gaming, this is another interesting point. There's a, this divide now between single-threaded and multi-threaded results. Some games are leaning towards multi-threaded now, especially with AMD's own push for multi-threaded goodness with uh, Vulkan and, and DirectX 12. Uh, and in our results, this processor is, I would call it, good enough for gaming that you probably wouldn't notice a difference, right? So when AMD gave us the results, they showed only 4K results, um, which obviously puts the uh, impetus on the GPU to handle most of the workload, right? That's where your bottleneck is going to be at 4K gaming, clearly on the GPU. And in those cases, the Ryzen processor is perfectly fine. It's within, you know, 4 or 5% either direction, some above, some behind, compared to the 7700K, which has kind of been the, uh, the, the flagship mainstream kind of high-end gaming processor to date. But we looked at 1080p gaming, um, 1080p ultra settings, so we didn't kind of dumb it down to 1080p medium settings or anything below that, right? We wanted it to be realistic, but we know a lot of people are gaming at 1080p. Um, we found even then, Civilization VI, the GPU benchmark, the graphics benchmark, was 12% faster on the 7700K and 22% faster on the 6900K. So that actually, there is a difference there. In Hitman, uh, running a DX12, the 7700K was 19% faster and the 6900K was 18% faster, and instead the Ryzen 7 1800X was actually pretty much matched performance with the Core i7 7600K, which is a quad-core, non-hyper-threaded processor. And then finally, in uh, 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 Rise of the Tomb Raider, I'm sorry, they're all, uh, all the Intel processors are about 20% faster than the Ryzen processor. So that's clearly an architect architectural, you know, single-threaded uh, issue at work there. So. Um, if you're gaming at 1080p or above, 
or I mean, let me say this, if you're gaming above 1080p, I think this processor is going to offer, you know, enough, more than enough performance for any kind of, you know, GPU limited workload that you're going to have. If you're gaming at 1080p, there's a legitimate question to be had, and we need to do more research on what games, what scenarios, is a DX12 specific, uh, where these differences that we're seeing lie. But it's, it's, it's worth noting that that difference is there. Now, the final thing I'll touch on before we get to the conclusion is the power consumption. Uh, maybe not the, the top most important thing for you guys, but this is a uh, at idle 10 watts lower than Cabby Lake, which is an amazing feat considering AMD doesn't really process or control the process technology directly. But under full load of Cinebench, it's actually using 33 to 35 watts more than the Cabby Lake part. So maybe that's not that big of a deal because it is eight cores instead of four cores. Um, but if you look at the TDP ratings, which there's a, a different argument to be had about what those mean and, and why. The TDP of the 7700K is 91 watts. TDP of this part is 95 watts. So you would think, you would expect, many people would expect the power consumption to be similar between them. But AMD is using uh, a similar methodology to what Intel uses on the mobile side with Cabby Lake, where they will spike above the kind of uh, uh, limits of, of sustained power draw for some portion of time in order to complete a workload and maintain, uh, as long as they're able to maintain uh, stability. And so this is why AMD can you know, correctly say that if you have a better cooling solution on your processor, you're gonna have better overall performance in the long run. Uh, and you'll see that you know, we're not using a fancy cooler in this because we didn't have some of the uh, mounts for them yet, but you know, in some of our blender tests that last 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, depending on the part, you're gonna see that settled baseline performance and it's still, it's still relatively good. Uh, but it does put the power consumption of this more in line with the HEDT uh, Broadwell E platform uh, as opposed to the Cabby Lake kind of consumery type product line. Just something to keep in mind if you're looking at systems for any particular power draw reason uh, uh, or cooling concerns. So that's our short preview review, if you will, of the Ryzen processors. We still want to put those other two parts through the mix. Uh, and this is a $500 CPU, so it's still pretty pricey, right? It's still going to be above the vast majority of processor purchases uh, in this market even. But um, for a first pass, it's a fantastic product. This competes very well against Intel's Core i7-6900K, which is a $1,050 processor as we record this. Uh, at half the price, it's able to match performance in multi-threaded, maybe even beat it a little. Uh, and in single threaded, it's within reason, right? It's within, you know, eight to 10%, uh, maybe even five to 10% of those and even single threaded workloads. So a very good uh, response there from AMD. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just good to have this competition, guys. Like there was a whole lot of buildup for this. It's a long time coming. You know, all the pre-orders for this were, were through the roof. Phenomenal in terms of what we saw and what, you know, I'm hearing from everybody else on what they saw. Um, a lot of pent-up demand for an AMD processor that actually performs well. Uh, so the question is now, how will Intel respond? Are there going to be price cuts? Are they just going to launch new parts? Uh, I really don't know the answer to that. Uh, Intel is unlikely probably to drop prices. Uh, if you're the owner of a Skylake or a Cabby Lake part today, is this something you need to upgrade to? I don't really think so, right? Uh, unless you have a workload that is one of those heavy threaded, you can use all eight cores, you'll see an advantage there. But otherwise, you know, you should probably still be happy with what you got. But I think there are a lot of people that have been waiting to upgrade, uh, and this is going to be at the top of their list from a price performance ratio. It's going to be hard, hard to beat that. So we're going to follow up with uh, more videos on the overclocking, uh, the other processors, the chipset, storage performance, all the type of stuff will be covered in, in, in good time. And if you want more benchmarks and analysis of this, go to PCPro.com. We'll have uh, the architectural overview by Josh. I'll have all my benchmarks and testing and evaluation. Alan's going to look at storage performance. Uh, more to be had for this. So it's an exciting day. It's an exciting time uh, for AMD. And if you're an AMD fan, to be sure. Uh, and we'll have a lot more coming soon. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.